Hi everyone, I'm going to talk a little bit about prenatal development right now. I want to go ahead and share my PowerPoints with you and we'll get you started here. Okay, so first stage obviously happens, begins with conception. So I wanna tell you, first of all, um, we have three stages of prenatal development and they are not at all equal. The first one is roughly two weeks. It begins at conception and ends at implantation. So the egg being fertilized is really the milestone that happens here. And then the so here's our, our three periods, germinal, embryonic, and fetal. Something important to know that whatever the developing baby is at that time, this is, it's called a zygote, it's called an embryo, and it's called a fetal. So the germinal is also called the zygotic stage. It really just depends on which textbook that you're using. Um, 38 weeks long, as I said, these are not at all equal. The mother's experience of the trimesters is, however, these are not at all equal, so conception to two weeks. Cell division, um, conception, those are the big things that happen. Implantation happens about 10 to 14 days after conception. So this is the germinal period. Now, for the quiz, you guys are going to want to be able to identify milestones that happen in each of these periods. So be looking for those milestones. The biggest milestone of the embryonic period is organogenesis. This basically means that all of your rudimentary organs start to form as well as the heart begins to beat. So this is from week three to week eight, roughly. And this begins after implantation completes, okay? So this is just a little visual of a fetus from, well, as I said, <laughs> here, here it is a zygote embryo, and here it is a fetus, okay? So it takes you from what it looks at 28 days to 56 days. So there's a huge amount of development that happens in this embryonic period. That's why this is most sensitive to teratogens. Embryonic period, just some more visuals that you can see here the different development that happens. The fetal period is nine weeks to birth. This lasts about seven months in a full-term pregnancy. And it really minimally says that it refines and completes the primitive organ systems. This is a huge stage of development, so much growth, so much development. Um, and it's happening so fast, yet when you look at the consequences of preterm pre birth, a week or two makes a big difference. Okay, that's because everything is happening so fast and so much is happening. So here's some more visuals for your fetal period. So this is mom's experience, the zygote implants, and then she starts to feel all of these pregnancy symptoms, morning sickness, frequent urination, breast tenderness. This is, so a trimester would be the first 13 weeks. Okay, so this is trimester one, trimester two, um, probably the best trimester of pregnancy, start to feel better, more healthy with the morning sickness going away. You start to show, if you will, you start to go to the doctor and get um, monthly updates on what's going on inside. You can find out if you're having a boy or a girl and the rate of risk of miscarriage drops. Third trimester is uh, the whale stage. Um, lots of weight gain, lots of baby development. Also um, the, the belly, the big belly. Um, start going to the doctor at 32 weeks. Uh, good prenatal care is very proactive. And so you are being monitored every um, week at that point just to look for any indications that something could be wrong because the third trimester is where most of the complications will happen, like toxemia, very high blood pressure that's very dangerous to mom and baby. Okay, I am going to skip through. Oops, I'm going to go back. I skipped through a couple. I didn't mean to. Um, okay, so teratogens. These are the nurture birth defects. 
agents, okay? So these are things that the baby comes in contact with because mom does something. She takes drugs or she surrounds herself with environmental issues. She doesn't eat well. Um, these can do three different ways they can cause damage. They can attack the placenta, reduce the nutrients like smoking. They can go through the placenta and attack the embryo directly. And they can also be present in the birth canal or in breast milk. Okay, so different ways that each can impact the baby. So diet is huge. Mom needs to make sure specifically she is taking her prenatal vitamins. They are very important for neural tube development, that spina bifida that I mentioned in the other video. Um, also, mom needs to be chill. She needs to not be anxious, not be stressed. And I know that some of that is going to come naturally with a new pregnancy, but really trying to just be relaxed because fear, anxiety, and stress will impact baby. Okay. You have a higher risk of preterm delivery with that. Mom's age. We talked about that in the other video as well with um, Down syndrome over the age of 30, they consider you advanced maternal age. And so they are treating your pregnancy with a little bit more proactivity. They're making maybe more or sooner weekly doctor visits, things like that. They also know that moms who are teens also have issues after delivery too. So mom's age does impact. Um, rubella. So this is more a first trimester risk thing. Um, it causes cataracts, it causes deafness, different sensory issues, and it is something that is preventable by vaccination. However, you cannot get the vaccination while pregnant. So you would be tested when you go in for all of your um, prenatal blood draws, and then they would do the vaccine after you've had the baby. AIDS is one of those that is transferred all three of those ways. It goes across the placenta, it attacks the placenta, and it is present in the birth canal and in breast milk. So that is an important fact to know about that. Interestingly enough, babies who are born from HIV or HIV positive mothers do not necessarily contract it themselves, about 25% only, okay? Um, other maternal diseases, herpes, um, if a woman has herpes and has an active infection, when the baby is born, the baby can die from that as well as be um, rendered blind. So they would just schedule a C-section. Um, syphilis is one of those interesting ones. Most damage happens in the third trimester instead of the first trimester. So organ damage is the main association with that. Um, these are the environmental things. So x-rays are really bad. That's why they will always ask if mom is pregnant when she has to have x-rays, hazardous waste, PCBs. A lot of people don't know hot baths, saunas, hot tubs are dangerous for a pregnant woman. Um, they raise her temperature and that raises the temperature for the baby, which is an issue. Um, different drugs, things that you are prescribed or things that you take over the counter. Um, caffeine, antibiotics, depressants, hormones, all of these things. If you're seeing a doctor for anything, you should automatically disclose that you're pregnant because some of these things will be contradictory to healthy pregnancy. Um, smoking, like I said earlier, it constructs the blood vessels. So the baby is basically losing nutrition. Um, it can't fit through the blood vessels. So that's how low birth weight comes about, as well as, you know, the baby becoming a child who's shorter in stature than their counterparts. Um, low birth weight, learning problems, poor attention to school, behavior problems, as you can see, it's also now been linked to ADHD. Um, drinking is another big no-no. Um, the video that I put in last week's talked about Russian roulette. That's exactly how I describe it. We don't know how much and we don't know if it's any that causes the fetal alcohol syndrome. So what they find is babies who are born with fetal alcohol syndrome have heart defects. They're smaller brains. They're smaller than normal size, lower IQ scores. Um, and it causes more cases of mental retardation than Down syndrome, which is extremely sad because this is something that does not need to happen. So um, best bet, zero alcohol during pregnancy. Um, illegal drugs, we have a little less information on this because it's not um, 
something that women often disclose, but I'll tell you, they can tell when babies have been exposed. They can tell because they have smaller birth weight, they have impaired processing skills. Babies will actually have withdrawal symptoms, as you can see here with heroin. They will um, cry, they will, and honestly, with caffeine, it could be the same thing. Um, they think of when you stop having caffeine in your life, you know, if you do that, then you have a headache, then you feel like just different. And that is true for these babies too. So you want to be able to match the impacts with the cause. So you'd want to be able to match marijuana with, you know, decreased memory, verbal skills, things like that. Okay. So that is basically the big thing that you want to know for the second or the first quiz on chapter two. So pay attention to the birth abnormalities and be able to match them. There's a lot of questions on that. Okay. Um, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions before you take the quiz. More than happy to walk through or answer any questions that you have. Good luck, guys.